Hi, today we're going to start on page 8 of our chapter 9 notes packet and hopefully this video won't be quite as long as last night's. Sorry about that. What we're going to do tonight is finding the sine and the cosine and the tangent of an angle, theta, but this time instead of being on the unit circle like the last night's video, we're going to be given a point somewhere in the coordinate plane but it's not going to be on the unit circle, not necessarily. So this is another case. So what we have is we're going to be given a bunch of points and they're just going to be random points. They're not necessarily on that little tiny unit circle. Anywhere, they, they could be anywhere. So the given point, we usually call it point P. The given point P is on the terminal side of the angle theta. Now this angle theta, remember, is going to be drawn in standard position. So when we draw this angle in standard position, we're going to be able to find the sine and the cosine and the tangent of this angle theta and what quadrant it's in. So there's a little four-step method here to use when the point is not on the unit circle. First of all, you're going to plot whatever point they give you. That's pretty easy. And then draw a segment that connects the origin to that point P. And that's going to be the terminal side of your angle theta. And then you're going to mark theta. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to draw a right triangle. Now drawing the right triangle means you're going to drop a perpendicular down to the x-axis. The x-axis, not the y-axis. Never, never, never the y-axis. Put a little star next to that. Never use the y-axis for your right triangle. Then we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem to find the hypotenuse because we won't know what that is immediately. And the hypotenuse is also going to be known as the distance from the origin to the point. All right? So the distance formula is going to be used. And then you're going to use SOHCAHTOA. Sine is the y value opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And this r value we can figure out using the Pythagorean theorem a squared plus b squared equals c squared. But what does all this mean? It's not that bad. First of all, here's a point called negative 5, 12. So let's go back here on the x-axis. Let's go back to negative 5 and let's go up to 12. So negative 5, 12 would be, just be this point up here. So that's step one. Step two says to draw a segment connecting the origin to that point. So here's our little segment here to point P. And then we're going to mark theta. Well, theta is, remember, standard position. We're going to start on the x-axis. We're going to come around here, and this is the angle theta. So theta is something in between 90 and 180 degrees because it's in quadrant two. And then the next thing is, is to draw a right triangle. And to draw a right triangle, remember, we're going to drop the perpendicular straight down to the x-axis, right straight down, and create this right triangle. Now this right triangle, we know two of the sides, right? This base is 5 because we went back 5. This height right here is 12 because we went up 12. And now to find the hypotenuse, step four, is we're going to use a squared plus b squared equals c squared for this little right triangle. So we're going to use 5 squared plus 12 squared equals, and let's call this r instead of c. r, r is like the radius of, of a circle maybe. So 5 squared plus 12 squared is r squared. 5 squared is 25. 12 squared is 144. 25 plus 144, I think, is 169. So the square root of 169 is r, and the square root of 169 is 13. So this r value is 13 just by using Pythagorean theorem. All right, so what we're going to do is find the angle theta. Sine is y over r. Cosine is x over r. And we found our, well, look at the x value is negative 5, the y value is 12, and the sine of this angle theta, well, you know what? We can also call this little angle down in here theta. It's our other little, little angle that's really closely associated to the big one, this little angle right here in this triangle. And the sine is opposite 
over hypotenuse. So the sine, we can call this the opposite side. This is the hypotenuse. So opposite over hypotenuse is sine. Well, the opposite side in this right triangle is 12, which is the y value. The hypotenuse we just figured out was 13, so there's your sine of that angle theta, 12 thirteenths. The next thing we're going to do is cosine. Well, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Well, this little angle theta that's associated with this big old theta, so this little angle theta inside the right triangle, the adjacent side is 5. The hypotenuse again is 12. But the x value is negative. So this would be negative 5 over 12 because remember the sine in quadrant 2 is positive but the cosine and tangent are going to be negative. The tangent is opposite over adjacent from Sokotoa. The opposite side is 12. The adjacent side is negative 5. So there's your um, sine, cosine, and tangent. Or you could have done sine over cosine, and you would have gotten the same thing, 12 over negative 5. And what quadrant did the, this end up in? This ended up in quadrant 2. So remember, from the All Students Take Chemistry, from All Students Take Chemistry, this is a quadrant 2 angle. In quadrant 2, only the sine is positive. And you can see right here, that this is the only trig value that's positive because S quadrant 2 only the sine so cosine is negative tangent is negative and that's because the angle is in quadrant 2 over here we've got a point we're going to go over to and we're going to go down to so we're going to plot that point we're going to connect it to the origin. Now remember, dropping it down to the x-axis means we're going to have to go up to the x-axis here. Oops, I didn't quite hit it right. But I can make my right triangle. All right, so what we have is we have this length here that's 2. We have this length down here. This is really negative 2. The angle theta is this big old angle. But associated with that big old angle is this little angle right here inside the right triangle. So let's call this guy theta, this little angle right here, because it has a relationship to this big angle. And how do you get the r value here? Well, we've got to use the Pythagorean theorem, which says 2 squared plus 2 squared equals r squared. Right? The length is 2. The length is 2. So 4 plus 4 is r squared which means a is r squared, and you got to take the square root of both sides, so the square root of a is r, but then the square root of 8 is really 2 square root of 2 when you simplify that radical down. So the sine, remember the sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So the sine, the opposite side is negative 2, the hypotenuse is 2 square root of 2. Well, these can be simplified. This 2 on the outside can be simplified down to negative 1. And you, let's rationalize the denominator. We're going to multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 2 over the square root of 2. So negative 1 times the square root of 2 is just negative 1 square root of 2. Square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2. So there's your sine. Now the cosine of angle theta. Remember, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And from this angle theta, this is the adjacent side up here. So the adjacent side is 2. The hypotenuse still is 2 square root of 2. So we've got to reduce that down to 1 over the square root of 2. And then just like before, let's rationalize the denominator by multiplying top and bottom by the square root of 2. And now we have positive 1 over the, times the square root of 2. Square root of 2 times square root of 2 is just 2. So there's the cosine. Now the tangent. The tangent is opposite over adjacent. Well, from this angle, the opposite is negative 2. The adjacent is positive 2. So opposite, negative 2, 
adjacent positive 2. Well, negative 2 over positive 2 reduces down to negative 1. And what quadrant did we end up in? We ended up in quadrant 4. And again, let's talk about all students take chemistry. All students take chemistry. All students take chemistry means in quadrant 4, only the cosine is positive, which means that the sine and the tangent are negative. And that's what we saw here. Look at the sine is negative, right? The cosine turned out to be a positive number, and the tangent turned out to be a negative number. So we can kind of see that the all students take chemistry applies here because C stands for cosine. Only the cosine is positive in quadrant four. Next. Point one, negative seven. Well, I guess I didn't give you x, y axis here. I guess we had to draw our own here. All right, x. Or there's your y-axis, there's your x-axis. Where is 1, negative 7? Okay, we're going to go over 1, and we're going to go down to negative 7. So 1, negative 7 would be down here. Connect that with the origin. Drop the perpendicular up to the x-axis. We'll mark our right triangle. And remember, this is theta, the big one is. But it's a lot easier if we just call this little acute angle inside the right angle theta. So this will be the opposite side, and this will be the adjacent, and this is the hypotenuse. So this length is 1. Down here, this opposite side is really negative 7 because we went down. And the hypotenuse, 1 squared plus 7 squared is equal to r squared. Well, this is 49, which is 50. And if you take the square root of both sides, the square root of 50, that breaks up into 25 times 2. So this would be 5 times the square root of 2 is equal to r. That's the hypotenuse of this right triangle. So the sine being the opposite over the hypotenuse well, the opposite side is negative 7. The hypotenuse turned out to be 5 square root of 2. Well, we don't like those radicals in the denominator for some reason. So you're going to multiply top and bottom by the square root of 2. So we have negative 7 square root of 2 over 5 times the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is 5 times 2, which is 10. So there's the sign cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Well, the adjacent side is positive 1. The hypotenuse is 5 square root of 2. Rationalize the denominator, square root of 2 over square root of 2. And what does this become? 1 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 2. 5 times the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is 5 times 2, which is 10. That's the cosine. And then the tangent, tangent is nice. It's opposite over adjacent. The opposite side is negative 7. The adjacent side is 1. Negative 7 over 1 is negative 7. What quadrant? This ended up in quadrant 4. And remember, with all students take chemistry, all students take chemistry in quadrant four. Only the cosine is positive, which means sine and tangent are negative. And that's what happened here. The sine was negative, the cosine was positive, and the tangent is negative. And it all has to do with whether the x or y values are negative or not. Okay, last but not least, you've got this point called negative, negative, negative 4, negative 2. All right, so we're going to go back here, negative 4. 
we're going to go down here, negative 2, plot our point, connect it with the origin. Our point P. And then we're going to connect the point P with the x-axis, make a right triangle, and this is our angle theta, but this angle theta is really got the same characteristics as this angle theta inside here, so let's call this our angle theta. All right, how far have we gone down? We've gone down to negative 2, and from this angle theta, this is the opposite side. From this angle theta, we've gone back negative 4. This is the adjacent side, negative 4. And then we have to find negative 4 squared plus negative 2 squared equals r squared. It really doesn't matter if we call this negative or positive because it's the same thing. Negative 4 squared is the same thing as positive 4 squared, which is 16. Negative 2 squared is the same thing as 2 squared, which is 4. And 16 plus 4 is 20. So if you take the square root of both sides, this breaks down into 4 and 5, so we have 2 squared of 5 is equal to r. So we've got this side, which is the hypotenuse, 2 squared of 5. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. The opposite side is negative 2. The hypotenuse is 2 squared of 5. Well, that reduces down to negative 1 over the square root of 5, and now we have to multiply by the square root of 5 or the square root of 5 to rationalize the denominator. So we have a negative 1 times the square root of 5. The square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is just 5. The cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Well, the adjacent side is negative 4. The hypotenuse is 2 square root of 5. Well, 4 over 2 reduces down to 2 over 1. And the square root of 5 has to be rationalized. Multiply by the square root of 5 over the square root of 5. Negative 2 times the square root of 5 is negative 2 square root of 5. Square root of 5 times square root of 5 is just 5. And now the tangent. The tangent is just the opposite over the adjacent. The opposite side looked like it was negative 2. The adjacent side is negative 4. Negative 2 over negative 4 is positive a half. And what quadrant did this end up in? This ended up in quadrant 3. And remember in quadrant 3, let's do our all students take chemistry again. All students take chemistry. In quadrant 3, only the tangent is positive. That's what T stands for. And that means that the sine and the cosine are negative. And that's what happened here. The sine turned out to be negative. The cosine turned out to be negative, but the tangent turned out to be positive. So that's what happens that all students take chemistry tells us about whether or not these values are going to be positive. And that's it for tonight. Have a good weekend.